Joining us now in a CNBC exclusive is Steven Mnuchin. He's the former U.S. Treasury Secretary, founder of lead in, the lead investor behind the capital infusion, Liberty Strategic. Uh, Mr. Secretary, great to have you this morning. Um, you know, you, you decided to uh, put as much as I think it's 15 percent of the capital in your fund into NYCB. And I, I guess I have to wonder why, when only a week ago management identified material weaknesses in the company's internal controls related to internal loan review, and analysts will still point out that the business model is still very much overweight, some of the least desirable parts of the commercial real estate market. So why is this a good investment? Well, first of all, it's great to be with all of you here today. Um, th this is a business I've known well for a long period of time. So w we looked at a long time ago potentially merging One West with New York Community, so I've been following it. And more recently, when they did the Signature Bank deal last year, I followed it well as well, which I, I think was a very attractive deal for the company, and particularly bringing the two franchises together. So. Uh, at the end of the January, the company announced some issues associated with cutting the dividend and increasing reserves. Uh, I, I reached out to the company and began a diligence process in case they wanted to increase capital. And it was really at the end of last week that we moved forward very quickly. So I like the franchise a lot. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a top 20 bank in the U.S. with very attractive markets. It's got a great branch network. Uh, unlike the banks that had problems last year, uh, this business has 80 percent of their deposits or are insured, so it's got a very stable deposit base. And, and the issue is really around perceived risks in the loans. And with putting a billion dollars of capital I into the balance sheet, it really strengthens the franchise. And whatever issues there are in the loans, we'll be able to work through. And bringing Joseph Odding in, who, who I worked with very closely in, in One West and then as controller, you know, I, I think there's a great opportunity to turn this into a very attractive regional commercial bank. And you're confident that they have effectively recognized some of the risk within the portfolio itself? I mean, again, in reference to the fact that they did cite, and we know that there seem to have been material weaknesses in some of their internal controls in terms of reviewing loans. Uh, do they still have a ways to go there? What gives you the confidence that that loan portfolio is as strong or perhaps as worthy, at least, as, as you seem to indicate? So let me just say, S Sandro, who was the chairman and, and you know, did the Flagstar deal, uh, when issues came in, Chairman uh, Sandro took over as executive chairman and stepped into the CEO role and, and really did a great job in, in a short period of time really on this. And we did extensive diligence on the large loans. Uh, you know, the, the bank will look at the reserves and we'll make sure over time it has the appropriate reserves. And that can be done through a combination of our capital and earnings. We cut the dividend down to a penny a share, so we're going to retain almost all of our earnings. And we, we think the asset side is very manageable. The bank has today about 11 percent tier one capital, about 10 percent CET1. And if, if we need to take more reserves in the future, which we'll carefully review, we, we clearly have the capital base to sustain that. All right, Mr. Mnuchin, it's great to have you on. Thank you. I do want to go over some of the portfolio issues. One fifth of, of, what, of, of these loans are tied to New York rent regulated multifamily. That law changed dramatically since many of these, the, of these apartments were lent to. Uh, you do have a lot of criticized loans, including $552 million, we know, potential loan losses uh, involving a co-op, involving office space. What makes you think, in light of the fact that these, this company, is, I will willing to say, was offering some suboptimal financials, that you really have a handle on how bad this bank is? Well, let me just say, I think that co-op loan was, was really a one-off situation. And I think they've either sold it or they have it committed to sold. I don't know if it's closed yet. But that was really a one-off situation. Look, uh, we understand what's happened in the rent-stabilized market. There were a lot of people who bought these properties with the idea that they could convert them and raise rents. Um, and they're not going to be able to. But there's a lot of people in this portfolio that didn't. Uh, a relatively small part of the portfolio are large loans with 100 percent rent stabilization. When the bank made these loans, they were very low LTVs. So I think there's a lot of cushion in it. 
Um, you know, the good thing is, you know, look, I, I think interest rates are going to come down over the next two years. The, the great thing about multifamily is, unlike office, they have cash flow. With lower interest rates, that's going to help a lot. And there clearly will be some problems in the portfolio. There's no question about that. And we've taken that into our account in the underwriting. And that's why we raised a billion dollars of capital. So, you know, any issues the bank has with needing additional reserves and problems, we'll be able to deal with. Okay, so Mr. Secretary, we know that uh, uh, some of the loans had already been previously signature sold. Uh, they had a hard time getting 70 cents to the dollar for a lot of these loans, again, because of the, these 2019 law changes. Uh, and we know that there are, starting in 2025, a, a, a lot of what I can just say that have to be some sort of refinancing. Are you taking that all into account and feeling confident that maybe the value of real estate is better or that maybe uh, the 2019 law will not be as prohibitive for the rest of the properties? I mean, I'm not taking into account there's any changes in the law. So we, we understand the law and the impact. Let me say the bank was very smart when they did the signature deal, which was an assisted deal. They left the bad loans with the government. So you can assume those were the worst loans. And they were sold at distressed prices to, you know, real estate funds. So, you know, I, I think that was a great transaction. When they did it, they got cash. They didn't take any of the bad loans. And look, we're, we're going to work through these loans over time. I mean, I would just put this in perspective. Uh, and, and again, these are approximate numbers. But when we did the deal yesterday, uh, I think the tangible book value was about 665 a share. Based upon the closing price last night and, and the warrants, tangible book is still 620 a share. And, you know, the stock is trading at a significant discount to that. So, look, Joseph and I have done this before with with a bank that needs to be rebuilt. Um, you know, we're going to retain earnings. We're going to build reserves when we need to do that. And, you know, we got plenty of time over the next couple of years to really rebuild this franchise. And look, we like we like the multifamily business. So there's a there's a time to work through this. Right. Uh, and, and I will just say, look, probably the biggest problem in the portfolio is the, the New York office. Um, there's about three and a half billion of office. We've looked at two and a half of the three and a half billion. We've taken into account what we think needs to be done. So I would say, you know, the office portfolio is the one that, you know, we will we will work out of the quickest. The multifamily portfolio, look, you know, Fannie and Freddie are refinancing multis. I, I know over the last month or two, a, a lot of loans refinanced away from the bank. And we can reduce that multifamily portfolio over time. Yeah. Uh, well, you mentioned office and the two and a half billion that you've taken a look at. What are your expectations there? Uh, we all know where things stand in New York in terms of only 50 percent or so people showing up more or less most days to work and uh, and therefore what the landlords in particular of let's call it a minus to B properties are looking at. Look on, I, you know, on multifamilies that have cash flow and lower interest rates, you know, you can work out a lot. On New York office, where you have empty office buildings of Class B, um, there's a reason why the values are down a lot. And, and I don't see New York office, particularly Class B, working out in, you know, getting better in, in the future. That, so that's not an right. area. You know, we've taken that into account. It is a limited part of the portfolio. We have a lot of flexibility. We have the ability, as I said, to build reserves as we need it. Um, it, it it's, you know, we, we can work through that. And, you know, look, this is, uh, it's rare to be able to come in and buy into a top 20 bank in the U.S. in great markets with great branches, uh, terrific private wealth management teams that came from Signature. I'm looking forward to visiting with them next week. And, you know, th th this, yeah. I believe, is going to be a great franchise over time. Mr. Secretary, I imagine lots of opportunities cross your desk. I wonder if you'd entertain a question about the degree to which you see stress or duration risk across the spectrum of uh, regional or community banks right now. Well, there, there's no question that, that higher interest rates and credit losses ha have an impact on, you know, kind of regional banks. And look, may, maybe there's opportunities for us to do acquisitions over time. That's something that we don't really plan on, but we'll look at. Um, you know, at One West, when we bought IndyMac, we did two follow-on acquisitions with the FDIC. The, the good thing about being a bank is if there are assisted deals to do, it's a lot easier to do them as a bank than as a private equity firm. So, 
you know, we'll be looking for the right opportunities if they exist.